part two of this series about the two times that a doctor has told me that I may never play sports again. In the first video, I talked about my knee injury in high school. I still to this day think that was one of the things that changed my path as an athlete, as a person for the better. It gave me a whole new outlook on life. It's the first time I was really tested mentally, physically, emotionally in my life. I think if that would have never happened to me, I may have never figured out what it meant to really work for something. But in this video, we're gonna talk about the second time. new to this channel, welcome. My name is Willis Mackey Jr., pro basketball player, living in France at this moment. And in this channel here, it's simply me documenting my life overseas and bringing it to you wherever you are watching from. If you wanna be a part of that journey, please feel free to subscribe, like the video, comment down below, and check out my other stuff. A lot of them will be linked down in the description. Check them out, story time. But before we start, a word from our sponsor. The Budget Baller is an online store that specializes in beginner-friendly customizable spreadsheets. These products are designed specifically for individuals or businesses that have little to no accounting experience. It makes it very easy and simple to use. Right now, our viewers can take advantage of anything on the store for 15% off. Yes, 15% off. You don't want to miss this. So visit etsy.com slash shop slash the budget baller or simply click the link in the description below and find the product that's best for you. Thank you for that and thank you to The Budget Baller for sponsoring this video. So let's set the scene. It is the summer of 2016. I was just finishing my freshman season and now going into my sophomore year. I had just come off my first season playing two sports. I remember one day I was having some chest pains. I simply thought it was like heartburn or something. So you know, I just brush it off. Went about my day training, all that, you know, in the summer, it was June, so it was the summer, and I was having summer classes and I was and I was actually just training like normal, like because in the summer was when we was really doing like most of our training because I only had like one class, you know. Two days go by and the chest pain is still there. It was starting to pick up a little bit, especially when I would lay down. Three days go by and I'm like, hmm. I go to the team doctor and I do an EKG, which is you know when they hook you up with all those machines. I do an EKG. And I tell you no lie, doctor comes back in the room with my EKG results. And the first thing he said to his assistant that was in there with me, he was like, do the EKG again. He was like, I don't think this, I don't think it was a good reading. So I do the EKG again and she said, make sure that you keep still, that you don't move. So I was like, I didn't move the first time, but okay. After I take it the second time, the doctor comes in the room and he's just like, we're gonna have to take you to the emergency room. Because at this moment, this EKG is telling us that you are currently having a heart attack. Now, put yourself in my shoes, right? And this doctor is telling you that you are having a heart attack at that moment. So I was like, what you mean I'm having a heart attack? There's something in my EKG that's telling them that my levels are, are higher than normal, which usually indicates that I had a heart attack or I'm having one at that time. My roommate at the time, shout out to my boy Cisco, took me to the emergency room. This is where it gets crazy. It was a lady and a guy and they were like, are you Willis? And I was like, yeah. They get a wheelchair, pull this wheelchair out, put me in this wheelchair and start rolling me down this hall. They put me on this bed. They hooked me up with all these machines. I remember there was two women to the left who were interns, I assume. So they were just like writing things down, like watching, like I guess they were shadowing the doctors. One lady asking me questions like, how are you feeling? Meanwhile, while she asked me all these questions, a doctor is holding my head, putting all these things. There was no lie, maybe 10 people in this room all moving at a fast pace, trying to like get me situated because like I said, they thought I was having a heart attack. A couple minutes later, they said, we're gonna have to do a surgery to see what's going on in your heart. So I'm like, yo, they about to chop my chest open? They got it but to get to my heart. Everybody slowly leaves the room and it's just me and this poor intern guy. He was responsible for prepping the surgery area, which happens to be literally right next to my boy downstairs. He basically put a towel on my, you know, and I had to hold it to the side so he could shave that area because that apparently was where they were going to do the incision to get to my heart, which is crazy, right? Shortly after he finished, maybe two seconds after, they roll me up into this elevator. I remember going upstairs. They take me into this surgical room. The doctor was like, we're gonna put an incision right next to your groin and we're gonna put a pole. He showed me this pole. It was like, yo, maybe like three feet, no lie. And he said, we're gonna put the pole up to your heart and spray your heart with dye 
to see if there's any blockage in your heart. So I'm like, yo, that pole is going away. Literally put the pole in me while I was alive. I was awake. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Literally put the pole in me. But I was on a local anesthetic, so it means I didn't go to sleep. And I remember watching my entire surgery. Like I could see them spraying the dye on my heart and all that stuff. Crazy. I had to feel high, you know, because I was on the medication and I was looking, I was like. After the surgery, they told me they didn't find any blockage, but that I was diagnosed with myocarditis, which is simply swelling of the heart muscle. So my heart muscle was swelling. They think it was from overworking myself. They think since I was playing two sports, that it was really like taking a toll on me. Like it was a lot for me. I honestly was like, it makes sense. Cause I was really getting overwhelmed, you know, playing two sports, but you know, it was kind of what I wanted to do, what I signed up for. They told me that I would not be able to play sports for six months. No activity, no running, don't walk too fast, nothing. Don't overwork your heart because it could cause long-term damage. I remember going to the doctor the week after for a little follow-up to just see how I was doing. He told me, I know that you play two sports at this moment, but I honestly don't know if you were going to be able to play a sport again unless your heart recovers the right way. Myocarditis, it could be very serious and cause a lot of long-term damage, or it could be minor. That moment, it was a lot to take in because I know heart issues aren't anything to play with. First, I already knew I was out for potentially six months, but I didn't know I was gonna be out, let's say forever almost, you know? It was hard to digest that. A little bit after was I was going to the Ohio State Heart Facility. Every single two weeks, I had to get an EKG. And I am happy to say that after those six months, I was able to return to basketball. And this was also the reason why I ended up not playing baseball anymore. As I got better, the doctor was telling me he doesn't know if it's smart for me to start playing two sports again. So I had to come up with the decision if I was going to play basketball or baseball, what I was going to do, or if I was even going to play sports. And as you can see, I went with basketball over baseball just because I was starting to lose my love for baseball. I could, I could definitely say that. I went with my gut. I guess being here is a testimony of faith, hard work, and just not quitting because even in those worst moments when literally I thought I was never going to play again, I never let that cripple me. I think the thing that made me recover from both of those things, the knee injury, the heart issue, was simply that I know that God didn't bring me this far to leave me. And that statement always stuck with me because it's like, there's no way I'm going to work this hard just to not feel the benefits of what I've been working so hard for. And it's the reason why I keep working to try to get better and better things. And it's the reason why I got through those two times because those two times were two easy moments to quit. You know, if anybody's listening to this still, you might be at a point where you feel like you won't have anything left in the time. Trust me, I've been there. Sometimes I'm even there currently at times, you know, where I have those days where you just, you just feel like you, you just don't have it in you or just ready to quit almost. You just have to realize why you do what you do. You do it because you love it. You do it because you worked hard to get to it. That's the only thing I can offer. I'm 100% healthy with my heart now. I don't have to get EKGs anymore. My knee is still a work in progress. When the knee was damaged, it gave me arthritis in my knee. So sometimes I get knee pains and different things, but I'm working on my strength a lot on my legs. I know over time it'll get better and better. I hope that y'all enjoyed this video though. Thank y'all so much for tuning in to this two part story time i really like story times like this because i get to tell my my story you know and it's a way for me to open up to y'all as my viewers to really let y'all connect to me on a different level so i take that seriously and i hope that y'all enjoyed this thank you so much to the budget baller for sponsoring this video be sure to check out the links in the description thank you all so much till the next video i love y'all peace